Babies, are you guys ready to put another engine together? That's right, we got another one. Let's go. They just sent this to me. I thank you, Engine DIY. We're gonna put this together. This is gonna be another full metal engine, but this is gonna be the smaller version of the big boy right here. You remember this one. This was a while back. I'm gonna put that away and get to work on this one. Look at that. It's even got the chevrons and everything. Very cool. Let's go. Welcome back everybody and welcome back to another Stig project and we're going to build another beautiful engine. As mentioned before, this is the smaller version of their large metal engine. And trust me, there's a big price difference. This one's a lot cheaper than the big one. I am always transparent with you on how much these things cost. The pricing on this one is around $400. It's around 300 piece model. And it took me about three hours to put this one together. So a nice little challenge, I would say. And I will always tell you this, if you can afford something like this and you're that big of an enthusiast, go for it, buy it, enjoy it, put it together. If you cannot, don't worry, they have cheaper versions which are 3D printed, which are very affordable. In any case, let's get back to the build. As always with these models, they come perfectly packaged. The instruction manual is there. All the tooling is there. All the hardware is there. They designated the engine with a fictitious model number, which is DM121. But the more I looked at it, it looked more like the CFM Leap family. Very distinct features, especially with the curved blades. You'll also later on notice the exhaust portion of it. It has the cutouts, the cookie cutters, or the chevrons. Very pretty. You must admit, the models nowadays that are being created are so nice. Takes me back to the old days when we used to have erector sets. But these are a lot more complicated, obviously. I think I'm showing my age by saying that, but in any case, it's a really beautiful model. And this one is gonna get started with building the base. We got a little bit of avionics work here. Build up the base first and all the electronics that go into it. Not much, it's one little circuit board and just a few lines. You also connect the switches and the charging port and whatnot. So yeah, I'll, I'll save you the headache on this one. Just gonna reinstall this real quick and plug up the cables, cover it up with the plate over here. It comes with the batteries as well and a nice little data plate for the engine. So yeah, I'm gonna abracadabra this and make this real quick. Okay, let's go. And there you go, all the avionics put together. <laughs> uh, put the cover plate back on and then flip it around and then we'll put the throttle handles on, which is just a couple of uh, uh, units right there. Yeah, anyway, we'll get this done right now. Okay, let's keep on rolling. We got a lot more to do the base plate assembled and all the mounting points. Now we get to work on the fan blades. Make sure to keep referencing the manual because you want to put these blades in the correct orientation, unless you want to fly backwards, but you know, that's up to you. Also have some sort of lubrication around with you. I'm going to use WD-40, but you can use whatever you want. Up next, we got the bevel gear and the fan case. Bearings all come included. This will eventually connect to the transfer gearbox, the TGB, and then eventually connect to the AGB, the accessory gearbox. You know, an interesting thing of evolution of engines, it's not only the components, the terminology also gets evolved. Fan and the front section of the compressor is now turned into the booster stage. This is gonna be a part of your N1. And in case you forgot, N1 is gonna be your low pressure turbine and low pressure compressor. N2 is gonna be your high pressure turbine and high pressure compressor. Remember, most of these modern engines are dual shaft. Rolls Royce excluded, obviously. Okay, before we move on further, we gotta do an operational check. Ops check, right? I got it hooked up, everything's ready to go. That's the little motor, that's our little trans, well, our gearbox, our accessory gearbox, uh, so to speak. Let's put this on. Oh, there we go, we got motion. Let's go throttle up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got V1 rotate. Okay. We are, I am happy with this. We can turn this off and then disconnect this for now. And then we can proceed on with the rest of the build. Let's go. You know, I'll be honest with you. Engines have always fascinated me. Not just turbine engines, any kind of engine. If you ask me, I am not an expert on anything. I know a little bit about this. I know a little bit about that. A jack of all trades, but master of none. Let me correct myself because that quote always gets misinterpreted. If you enjoy literature and enjoy reading, you will know exactly where this comes from. This comes from William Shakespeare. The full quote reads as this. A jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. The concept of this is not just focusing on one thing and one thing only. It's allowing you to learn trades and skills to be able to bring the disciplines all together in a practical manner. 
kind of like chewing gum and walking at the same time. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get on with this. Uh, I'm, this is turning into a philosophy session. Okay, back to the engine. We are putting together the stator vanes that are within the compressor section right here. Now the stator vanes don't move. They are attached to the compressor case. Turbine case also have these. They have blades that are angled in a very particular manner or fashion in order to guide the airflow properly. Between the stator vanes, you're gonna have the actual spinning blades, the turbines or the compressor section. It all boils down to optimizing airflow for better compression and better combustion. Also have variable stator vanes that do move. It's gonna be in the beginning stages of your compressor section obviously this model engine is not going to have these but in real engines they do have them those blades will always modulate and they are controlled by fuel to optimize airflow and prevent any kind of compressor stall and speaking about compressor stall here we go putting together the compressor section itself looks like four stages of it on this one Moving on to the combustion chamber at this point, as well as the turbine section. I really like the fact that they colored the turbine section or the hot section with the red anodized portion of it. it makes it very notable. Okay, quick little progress report. So pretty much almost all the major stages of the engine have been uh, brought together. We got our little compressor section, piece of the turbine here, some of the stator vanes for the turbine, same as over here. We got the main fan case over here. The fan is already built. So what we're gonna do now is basically start assembling the engine piece by piece. So right now it's gonna start us with the ex the high pressure turbine looks like and then low pressure turbine and then we're going to move on to the case the fan yeah we're almost done there ain't not much left all right and then we got some fuel nozzles to play around with cool let's go fun So if you guys didn't know, the exhaust portion or the cutouts or the chevrons that you see there is mostly for noise reduction. The secondary portion is for less turbulent air coming out of the engine, basically smoother airflow. Okay, we just gotta stop and appreciate the, appreciate this. I know we're in time lapse, but we gotta time we gotta appreciate this. That's just a thing of beauty. Why does this make me smile? <laughs> I'm so happy. I love it. All right, let's keep going. Look, I don't know what to tell you. I'm a very simple creature. I see things that spin and make noise and it makes me very happy. Nah, it is what it is. We make quick work of assembling the gearbox and attaching it to the fan case. There are also a few shafts that connect into the fan case that makes this whole thing spin, which I forgot to mention. Yes, this thing does spin. It has a little electric motor within that little gearbox. So yeah, it's gonna be beautiful when it spins. And by the way, don't worry about losing any kind of hardware. They always pack extra in case of this. Up next after this, we're going to put together the fuel nozzles, which is always a difficult chore, not only on the model, but also in real life. Fuel nozzles are never easy to get out or put in. My CFM technicians are punching the air right now. At this point, we're combining the compressor stage and the turbine stage, and here we go. Assembly is finally coming together. We attach all the compressor and turbine stages with the booster stage or the fan stage. And there you go, we are done. And I'm telling you, this thing is a beauty. Love it, absolutely love it. Look at this. The detail, the craftsmanship, I love it. Now, let's see if I put it right, put it together right. Let's see if it spins. 
<laughs> there you go. Apparently I'm some kind of a mechanic or something. Throttle up. Toga. It's beautiful. That's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a fun build. Well, that is about it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the build. Here's a nice little comparison to its bigger brother right there. But the smaller engine, believe it or not, was a lot more fun to put together. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you. And I will see you guys on the next adventure. Later!